all trying to be healthier, but it's expensive and all oh, the calories and blah, blah, blah. We're gonna solve both of those problems today with this price, this caloric count, not that we're counting calories, and that is butt cheap. Okay, so today we're making the perfect rice bowl that is also healthy. Isn't that beautiful? This is closer to what I eat every day. A lot of people are like, Josh, it's impossible. You can't be cooking all this food and still somehow maintain somewhat of a healthy body. That's because I don't eat that every day. Well, I guess I kind of do, but I only have a little nibble. But it really is closer to what I eat on a daily basis. A little bit of rice, a little bit of protein, and then you mix and match different sauces, textures, vegetables. Things should be delicious if they're prepared properly. If it's not delicious, you fucked up. Granted, I think the whole calorie counting thing is a little bit overrated, but we're including it because lots of people have asked and I'm trying to make this a little easier. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? If I've said it once, I've said it 300,732 times. You cannot have a good rice bowl without good rice. Get yourself three cups or about 630 grams of medium grain or short grain rice and wash it by placing it in a large fine mesh sieve, set over a large bowl, fill it all the way up with water, agitate it, pour out the water and repeat one to two more times. Lightly drain the rice, pop it into a rice cooker. And I know this is but cheaper. So if you don't have a rice cooker, first off, moment of silence. Second, you can use my guide for the many ways to cook rice, which is in the link in the description if you can't get one yet. Anyway, add three cups or 710 milliliters of water to your rice, finger test to ensure that's correct. Close and turn on your cooker and you have beautifully cooked rice. Next up, spicy peanut sauce. Underrated and extremely easy. To a small pan, add three tablespoons or 42 grams of granulated sugar, three tablespoons or 50 grams of soy sauce, two and a half tablespoons or 36 grams of white vinegar. Stir and heat that just till dissolved, allow to cool slightly, then mix in two tablespoons or 33 grams of sriracha, along with three quarters of a cup or 229 grams of smooth peanut butter and one clove of garlic grated. Whisk all that together and this part is important. Depending on your peanut butter, you may have to whisk in a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water and one teaspoon or four grams of cornstarch if it begins to seize a bit and separate. But anyway, once it's done, it should look something like this. This does make quite a bit of sauce, so keep it in the fridge and thank me later, pal. You can't be grilling no dry ass chicken without some sort of a nice glaze. So here's a simple one. Get a small pot, ideally a little man like this. Add a quarter cup or 67 grams of soy sauce, a quarter cup or 55 grams of white vinegar, and three and a half tablespoons or 53 grams of honey. Pop that onto a stove over medium high, bring to a boil and reduce for one minute. Being proactive, you should make a slurry while that's going by combining two teaspoons or eight grams of cornstarch and two teaspoons or nine grams of water. Whisk until dissolved. Once you're done simmering, add about three quarters of your slurry. Stir it in, let it boil for 30 seconds or till thickened. And if it's reached sort of like a teriyaki glaze like thickness, don't add any more slurry and it is done. But of course, if it's still thin, add the rest. Now just set that to the side for grilling your chickie in a second. Now, a rice bowl isn't made special by the glorious peanut allergy heavy sauces, it's also made with the other textural elements that you lay atop your rice. First up, my classic soft boiled eggs. Everyone seems to be oh so mystified by how I do these. Look, it's very basic. Get a pot of boiling water over medium high heat, then just slightly reduce the temp so it's a gentler, less violent boil. Add in four whole eggs and let those boil for exactly six minutes and 30 seconds. Immediately remove from the water and place into an ice bath, cool just until they're warm, but not hot, about five minutes. Then gently crack the shell all over the egg, peel them under a light stream of water. This will really help get that shell off of there. Then cut it in half to reveal a gentle dribble of liquid gold encased by a perfectly cooked egg. For your cucumber, it's real easy. Either slice it into coins or if you're a real G, cut your cuke in half then slice on a mandolin lengthwise to get paperdell like slices. Very fine dining of you. Last but not least, your carrots. Simply julienne one to two large carrots and toss that together with salt to taste, the juice of one lime, half a teaspoon or three grams of sesame oil, and toss together until evenly coated. These are shockingly delicious, so please understand that unseasoned carrots, or really any food for that matter, is 100% not pee. Last but not least, one avocado halved, quartered, peeled, and then sliced into quarter inch slices. Optionally hit it with a touch of flaky salt and lime juice. And last but not least, let's talk about our beautiful yakitori chicken. First cut six boneless skinless chicken thighs into one inch pieces, skewer them onto wooden skewers, and you should end up with about six to eight total skewers. Lightly grease those chicken pieces with spray oil, season them generously with salt and pepper on all sides, then just preheat a grill to medium high heat. In our case, we decided to use a Conroe yakitori style grill with bean chotan coals because the flex. Anyway, once hot, grease your grill, place on your skewer, and let those cook for about five to 10 minutes, turning every minute or so. And as soon as they're cooked all the way through with a beautiful deep browning and some nice light char, brush them on all sides with your glaze and then blast them on high heat to caramelize that glaze deeply onto the chicken. Then immediately remove from the grill to prevent burning and repeat with all of your skewers. I mean, look at these. Somehow the appearance of these encapsulates all human desire on one skewer.
Let's assemble. First, get a nice bowl. This recipe makes enough for four to six people, so fill that brother up with the desired amount of rice. Followed by one to two of your chicken skewers. Per plate, gently lay atop your carrots, then decide you didn't like where that was, so scoot them over a bit. Then lay on your cucumber nicely on the plate. Next up, one to two halves of our perfectly soft boiled eggs, a small handful of thinly sliced green onion, a generous dollop of your spicy peanut sauce. You can optionally add some crushed toasted peanuts on top of that peanut sauce. See how much better that looks? And then your avocado because you almost forgot it. And lastly, if you have any leftover glaze, give your chicken a tiny extra drizzled atop its glistening skewer. Then get ready to sit down to no ordinary rice bowl. This is a full-blown eating experience that will leave you feeling like a triathlete with the strength of 10,000 men. Or maybe you'll feel relatively nice. I don't know. Now let's taste test and see how good this really is. Right, a healthy rice bowl. If anyone's wondering, for the sake of the photo and the B-roll, of course I filled this out with rice. This is not a single serving. The vegetables and meat are, but the rice is like three times that. Skewer first. It is perfect. The chicken, beautifully moist, but that bing cho tan grill. Obviously not everyone has a bing cho tan. You can do it in a pan, you can do it on a grill, it's up to you. But this has that nice smoky flavor with the sweetness of the teriyaki sauce. But we made it a little lighter sugar, all right? It's not super sugary, but it still has that acidic soy thrust, if you will. And if your soft boiled egg ain't doing this, don't give me a goddamn phone call. The rest of this, obviously, you can mix all together. You can eat this how you want. You eat one element at a time with a little bit of rice in between each bite, or you can take all the chicken off and mix it all together with a peanut sauce. Oh yeah. This is the addition you want. With all this being so low calorie, the peanut sauce gives it some body, some density, so it's not all light. But you can go as hard on the peanut sauce if you want, or as light on the peanut sauce as you like. It has all the textures, all the flavors you want. It's deliciously satisfying, all for a humble price of this right here and a caloric count of this right here. And thank your lucky stars because you done gun made this rasp bowl. Or you can just go to hell. I don't care. You want to know what else has sticky meat laying atop your bowl? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our perfect rice bowl for the perfect price, the perfect level of health. If I was served this at a restaurant, I wouldn't think about the health aspect of it or the calorie aspect of it. I would just be focusing on how utterly delicious and perfect it is. And if you wanna make it a little naughty, throw some pork belly on there. It'd be pretty good. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.